How do you use the Save the Cat Beat Sheet to track your hero's arc across multiple books in a series? I've got my answer coming up. Hello everyone, I'm Jessica Brody, author of the number one best-selling plotting guide, Save the Cat Writes a Novel, and the founder of the online writing school, Writing Mastery Academy. If there's one question that I get more than any other when it comes to plotting, particularly using the Save the Cat method, it's this. But what about a series? By the way, if you want a quick overview of what the Save the Cat method is, I'll link to my video about that in the description below. So I do talk a little bit about the series beat sheet in Save the Cat Writes a Novel, but clearly not enough because the questions keep coming and they're good questions. What about a series? One day in a dream world when I have all the free time and none of the deadlines, I will sit down and write Save the Cat Writes a Series. And who knows, maybe that dream world will be a reality one day. But for now, let me add a little more insight to the topic via this video. I think the root of the question boils down to the main character or the hero. How do they continue to change and transform an arc through multiple books? If you've done your job well, then yes, your hero should have transformed in book one. They should have learned an important lesson about life and conquered a debilitating flaw that's been holding them back or causing problems. After all, that's why we write stories, to transform heroes, which by extension transforms our readers. But what about book two and three and maybe even four or five? if you're ambitious. What happens to the heroes there? Do they continue to arc and change? The short answer is yes. The longer answer is, you guessed it, it depends. So the way I see it, you have a few options, depending on the kind of series you're writing and the kind of story you're seeking to tell. Let's take a look at a few popular scenarios and how we might conquer the multi-book hero problem in each of them. Scenario number one, you have a series with one main protagonist who continues to be the lead protagonist throughout all the books. For example, The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins or Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. In this scenario, you're probably going to have a larger arc across the entire series, which is then broken down into smaller arcs or steps toward the larger arc. Look at Katniss and Harry. They both have larger arcs about accepting and fulfilling their destinies. Katniss is to become the Mockingjay, Harry's is to become the boy who lived and defeat Voldemort for good. And in each of the installments, we see them work toward that larger arc. In book one, The Hunger Games, we see Katniss first learning how to defy the capital. In book two, we see her learning how to take a bigger role against them, including dealing with President Snow. And in book three, we see her resisting her role as the Mockingjay before finally embracing it for good. And in each book, she has smaller flaws that she must conquer in service to her larger arc. Scenario number two, you have a series with multiple protagonists and each book focuses more on one of these protagonists. For example, The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer, The System Divine series by myself and Joanne Rendell. In this scenario, you're probably going to have a larger arc for the star hero of each book and smaller arcs in each book for the other heroes. In the Lunar Chronicles, book one is all about Cinder, book two all about Scarlet, and so on and so forth. And those are the heroes that arc the most in their respective installments. But as Marissa Meyer continues to add heroes to her saga, the stars of the previous books do continue to have mini arcs along the way. Cinder continues to fight demons, fears, and setbacks as she works toward her destiny. Cress continues to work on her confidence and so on. So by the time we get to the final installment of Winter, the hero, Winter, is having her big arc while the rest of the characters are still dealing with their smaller arcs. When Joanne Rendell and I wrote the second book in the System Divine series, Between Burning Worlds, we really struggled with this element. In book one, Sky Without Stars, shameless plug right here, Shatine is the star among the three protagonists, so she arcs the most in that book. She goes from selfish to selfless, eventually proving that she's changed by sacrificing herself for a bigger cause. But then what do we do with her in book two? We finally came up with a continuation of her arc, learning to accept the help of others and not always relying on herself. And then when we wrote book three, Suns Will Rise, we came up with yet another continuation for Shatin, learning how to be a team player and allowing herself to be vulnerable. So as you can see, the arcs are related and they're smaller parts of a larger whole. They work in steps, building up to a series long transformation. Scenario number three, you have an ongoing series that doesn't have a definitive end and usually has one 
one main protagonist. For example, most ongoing mystery series fall into this category. This is sort of the exception to the rule. In these situations where you don't have an end in sight, the hero usually only arcs in the first book. And after that, the hero usually just serves as an impetus or catalyst for change in other characters. We see this done a lot in mystery series like the Amos Decker series by David Baldacci or the CB Strike series by Robert Galbraith. In Memory Man by Baldacci, the first in the Amos Decker series, we see Amos having a significant personal transformation. He has to deal with his grief and find closure in the murder of his family. But in book two, The Last Mile, more of the emotional work is done with the guest star of the novel, Melvin Mars, who must find closure with his own family tragedy. And how appropriate is it that Amos is the one to facilitate that. After all, he's dealt with a similar transformation in book one. And in The Cuckoo's Calling, Cormoran Strike conquers the flaw of being emotionally locked in an abusive relationship, while in the second novel, The Silkworm, it's Strike's partner, Robin, who does more personal growing in her own relationship with her fiance. So hopefully your situation falls somewhere within these scenarios or maybe a combination of them. No one said writing a series was easy. I learned that one the hard way. But if you can pull it off, kudos to you. The key thing to remember when writing a series or a standalone for that matter is that someone has to arc in each book, whether that be the same hero, a new hero, or a guest star. Someone must be changed by this story. Otherwise, What's the point? Where did we go? And why did we take this journey? If you want more writing videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you want to dive deeper into the Save the Cat method and other writing topics, be sure to check out my Writing Mastery Academy, where you'll get on-demand streaming access to all my online writing courses, including my Save the Cat official companion course, my novel fast drafting course, productivity hacks for writers, and much more. I'll link all of that in the description below. Also, be sure to download my free Save the Cat starter kit at jessicabrody.com slash starter kit to get an overview of the 15 beats of the Save the Cat method, plus three full length beat sheet analyses of popular novels. I hope you found this video helpful. I will see you next time right here. Happy writing.